Truth Unveiled here, and today I'm keeping you updated with the latest. We're going to be talking about all of the FEMA barges and the truth behind them, and I'm also going to be sharing with you some footage about them. And later on, we'll also be going over some top secret documents and how they relate to FEMA's real agenda because there's a whole lot that FEMA does not want you to know about. And we're going to be also talking more about Puerto Rico and the truth behind that too. Now we're here at an article that was posted in NBC Philadelphia that says FEMA loads barge in South Jersey bound for Puerto Rico and this was as of last week because FEMA loaded 1.4 million meals and 1.8 million liters of water on the three-tier barge and they also claimed that FEMA loaded up to 60 transport response vehicles, 190 bucket trucks, various SUVs, and other vehicles onto the 730-foot barge. It takes about 19 hours to load everything and is expected to arrive in San Juan after being toured at sea for the next seven days. But we know the real truth about it. And while they like to give us the illusion that, oh yeah, FEMA's really doing something, and yeah, they're actually going there to really help the people, we actually know that they could actually be doing more than what they're saying that they're doing, and that not all the neighborhoods are actually being helped in Puerto Rico like they should be. Now, this picture right here actually shows you a picture of how the barges actually look, as you can see right here in the equipment that they have. I'm just scrolling here to show you all of the pictures. I'll be sure to link this in the description box below also. Now what I'm also going to do is share with you some of the official documents and statements that have come out from FEMA. Here are their news releases when it comes to this. Now again, this is what they're telling us because I'm going to tell you the truth about FEMA and what they're really actually doing when it comes to these barges because is it FEMA camps on wheels? Is this a conspiracy theory or is this actually conspiracy true? Now this came out as of September 22nd, 2017. As you can see right here, it says FEMA continues Hurricane Maria response and release operations and it says right here that the logistics support ship SS Wright is currently in the Caribbean Sea carrying more than 1.3 million meals and nearly 1 million liters of fresh water for delivery to Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. Two shipping barges, the FEMA barges, with 1.2 million liters of water, 31 generators and this is according to them, and 6,060 cots have arrived in St. Thomas and are awaiting power restoration at the port facility for offload. Two additional shipping barges loaded with food, water, and emergency relief supplies are en route to the Caribbean Sea from Florida, and more than 4.4 million meals are being flown to Puerto Rico from staging areas in Kentucky and in Florida. This was another statement that was released as of September 23rd, 2017, and of course they want you to believe that, oh, the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA are on top of it, and oh, they're actually trying to help people. And oh, they're working aggressively 24 hours on the clock to restore certain things such as the airports and restore electricity and everything. Well, not according to many of the locals in Puerto Rico because they have even said and there have even been reports that in certain areas of Puerto Rico, there have been zero relief efforts made in certain regions, in certain areas. There have been no personnel, no staff, no whatsoever in these places. The supermarkets are scarce. There are limited to no supplies whatsoever. And so the question becomes, why is FEMA saying one thing that, oh, they're helping to restore everything, but in actuality, it's the exact opposite in certain regions of Puerto Rico? Why is it two conflicting stories? What is the real agenda? And why is FEMA really there? Is this all a test to get ready for what's about to take place in America? Is it all getting ready for something even bigger? What is FEMA really preparing for and why all of these preparations? Now here's another press release that came out as of October 4th, 2017, so last week, and it says FEMA partners with private sector and volunteers to restore routine in Puerto Rico, and that's what they claim. Now this release right here just goes over some of the businesses and some of the sectors that they claim are helping Puerto Rico and they list some of them including the National Business Emergency Operations Center or NBEOC which serves as FEMA's virtual clearinghouse for two-way information sharing between public and private sector stakeholders. They also talk about the National Response Coordination Center which is FEMA and then they also talk about the National Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters or NVOAD. 
who focuses on the communication, coordination, collaboration, and cooperation between reputable national and local volunteer organizations, ensuring the most efficient and effective use of volunteers. But what is the reality? The reality is there is a huge cover up that, of course, your government and FEMA are not telling you. And what is that cover up? Well, many of the children there be due to the hurricane are sick with fevers. And also, we know that they use the NFL tactics to hide and distract from what's really going on in Puerto Rico. Why? Because they're testing to see how people will react when it comes to certain emergencies and how long they can respond to said emergencies and also operate their FEMA camps on wheels and if you still think that this is a conspiracy now I'm going to show you actual footage where they actually tell you the truth right in front of your face to live from shelter to shelter this is hard enough but as this moment right now now you're talking about putting me on a barge Gwendolyn Donahue is not happy with the temporary housing coming to Port Arthur She was rescued from her home during Harvey and is currently staying at the Red Cross shelter at the Thomas Jefferson Middle School. The next place she lives could look like this. It's a barge and FEMA is providing two of these that will hold about 300 people each on the port of Port Arthur. But I'll say again, I'm not a fish. I'm not a crab. I'm not a shrimp, because I don't know nothing about being on a boat. Mayor Freeman says the barges are expected to arrive in two days, but County Judge Jeff Brannick says other options are being looked at as well. FEMA and the Texas Division of Emergency Management will give options like mobile homes, trailers, and shelters. Mayor Freeman says three meals a day will be offered at the barges along with laundry and satellite TV. Officials are also looking into separating the men and women inside and will also have security in place. Jake, who is homeless. Jake, you've found yourself some shelter here. Why Why are you outside during this entire hurricane? Well, I chose not to go inside yesterday because the Salvation Army and the Russian Winds Homeless Shelter, where they were accepting people, were caught killing everybody that was in there. Were caught killing everybody that was in there. And mind you, the first video that I showed you has been deleted on social media platforms such as Facebook controlled opposition. But now I'm even going to show you an ABC clip that even proves and they literally even tell you that Walmart is placing people into truckloads and carrying them away. Went back underneath the bridge and they were loading up with as many people, it's got to be dozens of people yeah. in the back oh of that thing. Gosh. They take them to a nearby Walmart. 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 Uh, and then the Walmart is where, uh, I guess, metro buses or school buses will take them to the shelter. And then the Walmart is where, uh, I guess, metro buses or school buses will take them to the shelter. Uh, and then the Walmart is where, uh, I guess, metro buses or school buses will take them to the shelter. The question is, what shelter are they taking them to? Because I heard Tom say GRB is overcrowded and, and uh, we're not overcrowded, but at the capacity they had planned for. So right. I think they're, gosh, if, I, I certainly have that question. I don't know if we've answered it. And uh, they really have nowhere to go. At least they have a system where they're taking them to a Walmart where they can be inside and, and wait and figure out what comes next. At least they have a system where they're taking them to a Walmart where they can be inside and, and wait and figure out what comes next. The people I talked to, uh, uh, all, with the exception of one, uh, they all were eager to go wherever the truck would take them. Uh, interestingly enough, the Coast Guard helicopters and the National Guard helicopters are, uh, had, had pulled away. I hear one. There's no way we can see it. It's too far off. But I heard it pass over the military helicopter. 
or I had talked to a sheriff's deputy earlier. They said they had uh, a quadriplegic who was uh, stuck in his home uh, and obviously needed immediate rescue. But uh, and they were going to try and do that one with a chopper. I don't know if that's what we're hearing, but I know that was something that they were discussing. Hi, I'm Janet Napolitano, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Homeland Security begins with hometown security. That's why I'm pleased that Walmart is helping to make our communities more safe and secure. Some of these people, there will be, this is a new normal. They're never going to go back home. So they want to help them as much so that they're never just walking out of here feeling like they're going back onto the street. They work with them throughout the process here to help them adjust to this new world order that they are, they're going to be living in after this. to this new world order that they are, they're going to be living in after this. To this new world order that they are, they're going to be living in after this. Another thing to note about FEMA is they're not reporting on where people are going. Where are all of these people going? There's a lot of undocumented reports. Why is this the case? And why are there goods that are just sitting undistributed at certain ports and that could even be remaining there even as we speak? And there's even been videos that have been shared on Facebook that have even caught the government and exposed them where it even shows little to no efforts being made in certain regions of Puerto Rico. And we know this is the case because what? This has to do with what? Making and staging man-made hurricanes for what? Operation Depopulation. Now again, what does FEMA barges have to do with all of this? It has to do with what? FEMA camps on wheels. All of this is a test beforehand. The reason that you're seeing all of this going on in Puerto Rico is a test for what? Operation Depopulation and to see how long that the government has before they can start going in and moving people and displacing people from their locations and houses so that they can place them into the places that they want them to be, aka the FEMA camps. And of course, they're not going to call them that, but they've already started that with Hurricane Harvey and with Hurricane Maria. It's already begun, folks, and of course they're using tactics like the NFL and other things as major distractions. So you can forget about those things, and so the sleeping public can continue to ignorantly say that, oh, nothing's going on, oh, nothing's actually happening, but there's a whole lot happening right in front of your face, whether you want to realize it or not, whether you want to believe it or not. But now we're here talking about Project 908, or Project 908, which is the second part of this video. And you're going to see how this relates to FEMA and the FEMA barges along with the FEMA camps and how Walmart is also involved with such a scheme in the underground and what really goes on with these deep underground military bases. Now in a moment I'm going to also be sharing with you some secret documentation that has been unclassified recently. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because you need to know exactly what's going on and what your government has been planning for how many years now and how all of this relates together. Now we're talking about the National Program Office or the NPO Project 908. Now according to Wikipedia this says right here, the National Program Office was an office of the U.S. government established to ensure continuity of government in the event of a national disaster. Did you hear that? The NPO was established by a secret executive order by the National Security Decision Directive 55 that was signed on the September 14, 1982 by President Ronald Reagan during the Cold War in preparation for what they call a nuclear war, presumably with the Soviet Union. Could this be with North Korea? Could that be why you see all of the propaganda with North Korea? Korea and Donald Trump making stark comments. Now the reason this plan is so important is because it talks about a shadow government. It talks about the continuity of government and just as we went over in a few videos before it even talks about too how in the event of a national emergency or in the declaration thereof, what your government can do is then establish their secret government and use disclosed officials to do so. Could that be part of their plan for the New World Order? Because then it says that it was classified top secret code word Pegasus. It was also referred to as Project 908 or also known as 908. And a few more notes of this, it, it continued until 1994 to ensure continuity of government in the event of a national disaster. And like we already talked about, during this time, the government can take over local agencies, local departments, etc. Another reason for all of these disaster preparedness, like you're about 
about to see the reason that they're planning and staging all of these preparedness drills just like with the great shakeout drill that's going to be taking place next week as of October 19th why are they doing all of that because they're trying to see how they can seize certain areas and local warehouses abandoned malls etc for use of conversion into FEMA camps but what you'll also find out is that not only is this the establishment of the continuity of government, which is the hidden government, shadow government, and secret government, they also have secret weapons programs underground. Could this be the government's secret plot to work with the fallen ones disguised as aliens to bring about their shadow government and their fallen one demon technology and deceptions in the event of what they call post-governmental attacks? And also, according to a New York Times article that was posted back in 1994, they also speak about this program and the secrets behind it, including black programs and the use of black money, where billions have been spent on things such as bunkers, other equipment, including convoys, etc., since the 1950s. So we know that the government has been spending billions of dollars on these programs. And later on in this video, we're going to be talking about secret government warehouses, and I'm going to be sharing with you that article from the NPR that has to do with preparation for quarantines and plague should it ever break out. Again, the question is why are they spending so much money on these things? Now what you're looking at currently is a CIA declassified document having to do with Project 908 and we're going to go over it together because it says right here secret agency devises plan for post-government attack again the question we need to be thinking about what are they getting ready for why are they doing all of this massive planning ahead of time just because nothing happened now doesn't mean that it won't happen in the future again why all of this planning but it says right here from the AP and this was as of 1991 actually a super secret agency run by by the White House devise an alternate alternative plan of presidential succession if a nuclear attack and of course they claim it's nuclear part of the propaganda eliminated the national leadership according to a televised report Huh, that's very interesting and suspicious indeed because that reminds me of that one television show designated survivor that just came out recently could that be a message illuminati messaging let's keep going and one hour telecast that was premiered from cnn special assignment team said that the npo or the national program office that we just went over was authorized in a secret 1982 directive issued by reagan and remains barely known it said that george bush who was then the vice president was placed in charge of the office and that white house national security aide Oliver North was instrumental in placing up the covert project which he discussed briefly in the book quote under fire the NPO's mission is to make sure that a civilian leadership remains in place after what they call a nuclear attack again we see all of this going on with the propaganda with North Korea if all 17 officials in the constitutional line of succession to the president are incapacitated the plan provides for others both elected or should we say selected and non-selected officials to take over now could they actually be devising this we'll have to see it's very interesting and suspicious indeed that they would even go over this plan for 12 years and then it also talks about how they devised the network of bunkers and mobile shelters like we also went over from the New York Times report and some of the alternative succession pools during that time. And I'll be sure to link this in the description box below. This is page eight of that document that has been leaked. And then there's this document here that comes out from 1986, as you can see from the director of the FBI, and it says right here, Project 908 or 908, and the reason it's called that is because it's 908 pages. Now, of course, we're not going to go over all 908 pages, but I do want to share with you some things about this document that's very interesting and suspicious indeed. Now this is where it gets very cryptic indeed because if you actually look at this document in its entirety you start to see some very strange and eerie things indeed. Now here we are at page 43 and the reason we're on this page is because this talks about the FBI and their plans for not only continuing a government afterwards and after a so-called coordinated nuclear attack but also 
This document also talks about government related facilities that they already have in place in America. Did you hear that? This relates to what? So called FEMA camps. It says right here this communication is classified and it goes on to say the caption project relates to the FBI's responsibility to what? Establish emergency communication centers throughout the U.S. in conjunction with other federal law enforcement and intelligence agencies with similar missions. Do you know what that means all of the alphabet soups teaming together along with your Freemasonic police at the very top to do what more spying and control could that explain also the secret mysterious towers that have been going up in New York and many other places only time will tell because then it says what the FBI is engaged in identifying commercial and other private facilities that can be utilized as regional communication sites in the event that existing federal communication facilities are destroyed or rendered inoperable as a result of what they call natural disasters, even though we know they're man-made, or national emergency. Did you hear that? Are you hearing this? Does that sound like what? Preparation in Puerto Rico too. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. They also even list some of the facilities that they have right here on the next page. This is page 44 where they say the following facilities have been tentatively selected as potential relocation sites. That document that you just saw, internment and resettlement that comes from your lovely army, that document has to do with what? Relocation and internment in the event of national disasters. And they already starting with who? Puerto Rico, as you can see. And they even list some of the places and the facilities for relocation as you can see right here and note how they list a ton of places such as industrial parks abandoned places as you can see right here they list park mills right there if you go on to the next page on page 45 they also list right here other places more industrial parks as we've talked about before another industrial park right here we've talked about places that have to do with like abandoned warehouses abandoned malls places that are near railroads and railways because they also play a role when it comes to this fashion apparel places too we've talked about these things and how they're also using the stores and will be converting them into fema camps come the new world order then if you go to page 46 they also talk about the fbi's responsibility to establish emergency community communication centers throughout the U.S. in conjunction with other federal law enforcement and intelligence agencies with similar missions. And again, we talked about how these centers and these communication sites are going to be used for what? In the event of the New World Order. And they also give a list of these facilities right here on page 47. As you can see right here, they list the counties and places such as Colorado, and they list many other places too. And mind you, there are other places that they're not listing and telling you because it's supposed to be private. It's supposed to be kept a secret. We're also on page 131 that also talks more about support to what they call the intelligence community. And as you can see right here, they also talk more about potential relocation sites and centers that they plan in the event of the continuity of a government and a so-called nuclear attack in America. They already have it outlined, but now we're right here at page 132 where it says, it may be recalled that initial contacts should relate. The FBI has been charged with responsibility of establishing Establishing emergency communication centers throughout the U.S. in conjunction with other federal law enforcement and intelligence agencies having similar missions and furtherance thereof, the FBI is presently identifying governmental, commercial, and or private facilities that can be utilized as regional communication sites in the event that existing federal communication facilities are destroyed or rendered inoperable as a result of what they call natural disaster, more like man-made hurricanes or national emergency that's why they're planning all of these things ahead of time and the subject facility might meet the geographical and technical criteria for such an emergency regional communication site like the fact that there's a railroad nearby so that people can get on board easily could that explain also why your government has secret warehouses prepared for health catastrophes too? Because I've gone over this article plenty of times before, back in the summer of 2016 when it was first released, and this comes from the NPR as you can see right here. 
Now, again, I find it very interesting and suspicious indeed how they're doing all of this in secret. What are they stockpiling for? Why all of this is a secret? Why is all of this the case? And how does this relate to Puerto Rico in these FEMA barges? It's all a test getting ready for what's to come. As you see right here, they value the inventory of what they have at about $7 billion. Where is this money actually going towards? What are they getting ready for? Because then they tell you right here, if you keep going in the article, that the inventory includes millions of doses of vaccines and we've proven and we've gone over how vaccines is what operation depopulation vaccines do not help they only cause even more problems and more diseases and more allergies but they claim that it's against bioterrorism agents like smallpox antivirals in case of a deadly flu pandemic medicines used to treat radiation sicknesses and burns more like sorcery chemical agent antidotes wound care supplies IV fluids and antibiotics. Why do they have all this stuff? Because could they be planning for a pandemic and a plague to hit which they're going to blame on some outside force or possibly even climate change in order to use this as an excuse for even more of Operation Depopulation. Only time will tell, but we already see the starting effects of it with Puerto Rico. Please seek Yahuwah and his true son, Yahusha, because we know with Yahuwah, Yahusha, we do not have to worry or fear whatsoever, but it's important to stay awake, alert, and aware to the world around you and to know that it's coming to a police state near you. But this is Truth Unveiled here, keeping you updated and saying as always, Shalom. Not according to many of the locals in Puerto Rico because they have even said, and there have even been reports, that in certain areas of Puerto Rico, there have been zero relief efforts made in certain regions, in certain areas. There have been no personnel, no staff, no whatsoever in these places. The supermarkets are scarce. There are limited to no supplies whatsoever. And so the question becomes, why is FEMA saying one thing that, oh, they're helping to restore everything, but in actuality, it's the exact opposite in certain regions of Puerto Rico? Why is it two conflicting stories? What is the real agenda? And why is FEMA really there? Is this all a test to get ready for what's about to take place in America? Is it all getting ready for something even bigger? What is FEMA really preparing for and why all of these preparations? Now, here's another press release that came out as of October 4, 2017, so last week, and it says FEMA partners with private sector and volunteers to restore routine in Puerto Rico, and that's what they claim. And while they like to give us the illusion that, oh, yeah, FEMA's really doing something, and yeah, they're actually going there to really help the people, we actually know that they could actually be doing more than what they're saying that they're doing, and that not all the neighborhoods are actually being helped in Puerto Rico like they should be. Now, this picture right here actually shows you a picture of how the barges actually look, as you can see right here in the equipment that they have. I'm just scrolling here to show you all of the pictures. I'll be sure to link this in the description box below also. Now, what I'm also going to do is share with you some of the official documents and statements that have come out from FEMA. Here are their news releases when it comes to this. Now, again, this is what they're telling us because I'm going to tell you the truth about FEMA and what they're really actually doing when it comes to these barges because is it FEMA camps on wheels? Is this a conspiracy theory or is this actually conspiracy truth? Now, this came out as of September 22nd, 2017. As you can see right here, it says FEMA continues Hurricane Maria response and release operations and it says right here that the logistics support now this release right here just goes over some of the businesses and some of the sectors that they claim are helping Puerto Rico and they list some of them including the National Business Emergency Operations Center or NBEOC which serves as FEMA's virtual clearinghouse for two-way information sharing between public and private sector stakeholders they also talk about the National Response Coordination Center which is FEMA and then they also talk about the National National Voluntary Organizations Active in Disasters, or NVOAD who focuses on the communication, coordination, collaboration, and cooperation between reputable national and local volunteer organizations, ensuring the most efficient and effective use of volunteers.
But what is the reality? The reality is there is a huge cover up that, of course, your government and FEMA are not telling you. And what is that cover up? Well, many of the children there, be due to the hurricane, are sick with fevers. And also, we know that they use the NFL tactics to hide and distract from what the SS Wright is currently in the Caribbean Sea, carrying more than 1.3 million meals and nearly 1 million liters of fresh water for delivery to Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Two shipping barges, the FEMA barges, with 1.2 million liters of water, 31 generators, and this is according to them, and 6,060 cots have arrived in St. Thomas and are awaiting power restoration at the port facility for offload. Two additional shipping barges loaded with food, water, and emergency relief supplies are en route to the Caribbean Sea from Florida, and more than 4.4 million meals are being flown to Puerto Rico from staging areas in Kentucky and in Florida. This was another statement that was released as of September 23rd, 2017. And of course, they want you to believe that, oh, the Department of Homeland Security and FEMA are on top of it. And oh, they're actually trying to help people. And oh, they're working aggressively 24 hours on the clock to restore certain things such as the airports and restore electricity and everything. Well, not Truth unveiled here, and today I'm keeping you updated with the latest. We're going to be talking about all of the FEMA barges and the truth behind them, and I'm also going to be sharing with you some footage about them. And later on, we'll also be going over some top secret documents and how they relate to FEMA's real agenda because there's a whole lot that FEMA does not want you to know about, and we're going to be also talking more about Puerto Rico. And the truth behind that too. Now we're here at an article that was posted in NBC Philadelphia that says FEMA loads barge in South Jersey bound for Puerto Rico and this was as of last week because FEMA loaded 1.4 million meals and 1.8 million liters of water on the three-tier barge and they also claimed that FEMA loaded up to 60 transport response vehicles, 190 bucket trucks, various SUVs, and other vehicles onto the 730-foot barge. It takes about 19 hours to load everything and is expected to arrive in San Juan after being toured at sea for the next seven days. But we know the real truth about it.